Greetings. Welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, above climate change, and things adjacent. And uh, welcome back on this Saturday afternoon. Um, again, so, so many things to talk about, but uh, I only have time for a few. So uh, today there was a large Bernie rally in Queens. He was endorsed officially by AOC. He, uh, I just saw he was endorsed officially by Michael Moore. Um, he was on C, well, C-SPAN, and they, he, he said he was endorsing Bernie, and then they cut him right off. They were like, well, we got to go. See you. Break to commercial. Uh, they hate Bernie. And this endorsement by AOC and Elon Omar and Ayanna, uh, not Ayanna Presley, but Rashida Tlaib, um, eventually is going to endorse him like this throws a lot of weight behind Bernie and this actually changes the whole race um it's going to make a lot of people kind of question their Warren support and uh yeah so it was a huge rally um and was it me or was Bernie Bernie the only candidate that talked about climate change in the last debate I watched the entire debate I listened to the whole thing it was a really long I swear to God, I didn't hear climate change come out of one candidate's mouth, except for Bernie. Um, And again, it isn't the only thing that's going to save the planet, but his Green New Deal is the biggest push to recognize and attack the problem. AOC is also one of the most knowledgeable people in Congress about climate change. So, of course, her endorsement of Bernie makes total sense. Um, and they can, you know, work together to actually tackle the problem, uh, as it stands as the biggest problem facing the country and humanity. Um, she understands how dire the situation is. And that's of course, um, one of the reasons why she's so reviled by Republicans, uh, Republicans being the lackeys of the corporations that they are. She's also reviled by the likes of Nancy Pelosi and all of the corporate Dems. They also, what did Nancy Pelosi say? Something about the uh, Green New dr- Dream. What, uh, the Green New Dream? <laughs> That's my impression of Nancy Pelosi. I hope you like that. Um, <clears throat> Bernie said the 1% wouldn't give up their wealth without a fight, and most likely without sidelining anyone who will tackle this problem politically. Uh, I don't have hope that we will find the resolve to change this politically, but I I desire it, and so do many others, and we'll have to take the fight to the polls and to the streets wherever we can get something done. Anyway, go Bernie. So also wanted to cover... Oh, in the, in the live chat that we had the other day, live chat, live stream. It was a live chat and a live stream at the same time. Uh, We were talking about the Gail Bradbrook story about her taking a jet. And I I was reading the article while we were talking about it, but didn't read the part until after the video was over that she took this jet in 2016. So before Extinction Rebellion was formed, before she was one of the co-founders, she took a vacation. And they're trying to drag... It's really important to read the entire article, definitely. You know, headlines are the thing things that everybody responds to these days. Because nobody reads the entire article. Um, and sometimes I fail, I fail to re- read the entire article. And that's usually where the facts or the truth lie. So it's it's a little ridiculous to, you know, everybody takes airplanes. Most people in the modern world take airplanes either for work or for pleasure. Um, and to dig up something that happened, you know, years, a a few years before she was part of Extinction Rebellion, uh, seems a little ridiculous. I don't know what her position is on flying now, but considering it's three years later, it's probably very different considering she's also, um, part of groups that are opposing air travel or opposing expansion of 
airports. I don't know. But anyways, weak sauce from the elites and weak sauce from Republicans and weak sauce from the Tories and weak sauce from, you know, all the forces that are trying to bring down Extinction Rebellion. And also, lastly in this video, I wanted to talk about, uh, I think it was Proudhon was talking about uh, another founder of Extinction Rebellion saying that Extinction Rebellion was all about white supremacy, et cetera, et cetera. And I, and I misunderstood, I thought it was a, he was slamming Extinction Rebellion or um, smearing them. And it's not that at all. What he was trying to do was define the fact I misunderstood just by a, reading a, a quick chat that went by that that's what this was about. It's not what this is about at all. So I wanted to clarify that and also read this article from Medium um, from Stuart Basden, who was a co-founder of Extinction Rebellion. And Extinction, it's titled Extinction Rebellion Isn't About the Climate. Um, I'm going to read this. We can discuss it, whether you all agree or not. I, I agree on some levels, and I also, I don't, it's not that I don't disagree with this article. I agree on some levels, and I also agree that it is other things as well. Um, anyways, yes, yes, I know the climate is breaking down. It's urgent, an emergency. We've only got a few years left to fix it. Indeed, we won't fix it. Weather patterns will become increasingly unstable and unpredictable, and the effects it it will soon have on how humans around the world grow food will be devastating, likely causing harvests to fail across entire continents and food prices to skyrocket. Millions have already suffered due to the amplified instability. We're facing imminent societal collapse, whatever that means, both around the world and in the UK. All of our lives are soon going to radically change. None of this is particularly controversial. When a bus is driving with a certain momentum towards a person, it gets clearer and clearer that it will hit the person. After a certain point, it's inevitable, and that's where we stand now. With regards to the momentum of climatic, climatic change, the bus is about to hit us. Our lives are about to change. It's not clear whether or not we'll survive as a species. Many species have already been run over. 200 species each day each and every day go extinct. I've been with Extinction Rebellion from the start. I was one of the 15 people in April 2018 who came together and made the collective decision to try to create the conditions that would initiate a rebellion. I was a coordinator of one of the original five working groups, and I've been organizing with XR day and night since then, frugally living off my savings so I don't have to work, having quit an industry that paid me 1,000 pounds a week. And I've been in rising up the organization from which XR has emerged. Since the first Rising Up action in November 2016, I'm a Rising Up holding group member and a member of the XR Guardianship team. And for the sake of transparency, that previous paragraph is all about me pulling rank. I'm trying to convince you to listen to what I have to say. And I'm here to say that XR isn't about the climate. You see, the climate's breakdown is a symptom of a toxic system that has infected the ways we relate to each other as humans and to all life. This was exacerbated when European civilization was spread around the globe through cruelty and violence, especially over the, six, over the last 600 years of colonialism, although the roots of the infections go much further back. As Europeans spread their toxicity around the world, they brought torture, genocide, carnage, and suffering to the ends of the earth. Their cultural myths justified the horrors, such as the idea that indigenous people were animals, not humans, and therefore God has given us dominion over them. This was used to justify a multi-continent-wide genocide of tens of millions of people. The coming of the scientific era saw this intensify as the world around us was increasingly, increasingly seen as dead matter, just sitting there waiting for us to exploit it and use it up. We're now using it up faster than ever. Euro-Americans violently imposed and taught dangerous delusions that they used to justify the exploitation and reinforced our do dominance while silencing worldviews that suffered, differed, or challenged them. The UK's hand in this was enormous, as can be seen by the size of the former British Empire and the dominance of the English language around the world. There is stark evidence that everyday racial bias continues in Britain now, today. It's worth naming some of these constructed delusions that have been coded into societies and institutions around the world. The delusion of white supremacy centers whiteness and the experience of white people constructing and perpetuating the myth that white people in their lives are somehow inherently better and more valuable than people of color. 
That is true. The delusion of patriarchy centers the male experience and excludes, hinders female assigned people from public life, reducing them to a possession or object for ownership or consumption. Patriarchy teaches dominating and competing behaviors and emphasizes the idea that the world is a place of scarcity, separation, and powerlessness. Also true, the delusions of Eurocentrism include the notion that Europeans know what is best for the world. Also borne out through history. <laughs> the delusions of heterosexism and borne out through what we're doing right now, actually. Um, exporting first world um, standards of living or first world ways of living to the rest of the, the globe. This is the norm. This is how everybody should live. The delusions, delusions of heterosexism, heteronormativity, uh, propagate the idea that heterosexuality is normal, and that other expressions of sexuality are deviant. The delusions of class hierarchy uphold the theory that the rich elite are better, smarter, nobler than the rest of us and make therefore better decisions. There are other delusions. These delusions have become, become ingrained in all of us, taught to us from a very young age. None of these delusions have ended, although some of the arguments that supported them e.g. phrenology, have been dispelled. They continue to play out through each of us in our ways of relating regardless of our identity. The current pride of the history of the British Empire or their idea the USA is on the side of good continues to enable neocolonialism in 2019. Spot on. Taking the form of palm oil plantations, resource wars, and parasitical financial sector, to name but a few. The task of Extinction Rebellion is to dispel these delusions, we need to cure the causes of the infection, not just alleviate the symptoms. To focus on the climate's breakdown without focusing attention on these toxic delusions is a form of denialism. Worse, it's a racist and sexist form of denialism that takes away from the necessary focus of the need for all of us to decolonize ourselves. My ancestors are European, some of whom claimed to own people as slaves. There are black people with the name Basden in the Americas, and I have begun to mobilize my white family to make contact in order to seek to pay reparations. However, my own accountability cannot be fully paid through this. The insanity of the mind of the colonizer continues today. It continues in deforestation and industrial agri agriculture. Ding. It continues in the callous culture of consumption. Ding. Which intensifies each Christmas. It continues in evictions and deportations. It continues in the ways of relating to those around us that perpetuate separation and division. The result is isolation, pain, and suffering. The result can be felt at the individual level and the endemic le levels of loneliness and mental health illness. <clears throat> it can be felt at the community level in the theft of land for plunder and profit by largely European and U.S.-based banks and corporations, that it can be felt at the global level in the polluting of our air and oceans. So Extinction Rebellion isn't about the climate. It's not even about climate justice, although that is important. If we only talk about the climate, we're missing the deeper problems plaguing our culture. And if we don't excise the cause of the infection, we can never hope to heal from it. This article is calling to all of those who are involved in XR who sometimes slip into saying it's climate movement. It's called to the American rebels who made a banner saying Climate Extinction Rebellion. Um, it's a call to the XR media, Climate Extinction Rebellion. <laughs> uh, it's a call to the XR media and messaging teams to never get sloppy with the messaging and reduce it to climate issues. It's a call to the XR community to never say we're a climate movement because we're not. We're a rebellion and we're rebelling to highlight and heal from the insanity that is leading to our extinction. Now tell the truth and act like it. I use the term, um, so there are a couple of footnotes. I use the term insanity carefully with the intention of highlighting the need for healing. Indigenous First Nation people helpfully taught me to see the mindset of the colonizer as a sickness. In no way do I intend to marginalize or discredit the experience of people who have been labeled insane by a normative system, nor who identify as being insane. And the other footnote is climate justice refers to injustice that those who are affected first and worst by extreme weather events, the people in poorer countries, the majority of whom live in the global south, are not likely to be the ones who cause the climate emissions. The people who consume the most, including the pathology, pathologically wasteful cultures of Europe and Turtle Island, a.k.a. North America, and the rich who live travel around the world. Um, interesting article. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. Please feel free to discuss below. I, you know, I agree with all of this. 
I also agree with the fact that um, I, I don't know how far back the narratives go that we have been brainwashed with, you know, the, the, you know, and there are other cultures around the world that, um, are just as patriarchal, just as brutal, just as exploitive. Um, this is, you know, it's a human thing through human history. There have been extremely exploitive, brutal, uh, ex- um, patriarchal cultures, uh, This just happens to be the dominant culture right now, and we are the dominant culture, we meaning first world, whatever, European. Um, I'm not talking about – I'm talking about all all the people that happen to live within this culture, um, live in the dominant culture. But uh, we are the dominant culture because we – I don't know if it's just, just the narratives, but we were also the mo- the most exploitative, the ones that could exploit power and weaponry, and brute force, and also exploit um, tools such as Christianity, right? Brainwashing people, telling people to su- you know submit to their father, you know, to the ones that know better, to the people that are more powerful. It's just um, we were able to white people were able to utilize these tools in very destructive ways. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I have a friend who does perma- permaculture in Africa and he made a really good point uh, to me the other day saying that it's it will be easier for for his country and his culture to... Um, to, to go the way of living outside of, um, because they already are mostly living outside of the Western industrial civilization, right? They don't have power lines and they don't have, they don't have too much of the infrastructure already built up that we do. So it's going to be much easier for them to go, you know, to live in a permaculture kind of environment or live locally, um, to get their energy from renewable sources. It's just, they're going to be able to develop and go forward without having to cast off the shackles physically and mentally um, that we would have to cast off in order to make a huge change. And so those mental shackles that are going to keep us doing the things that we're doing are really, really deeply ingrained and really hard to cast off. And um, the question is, are we going to be able to do it in time and, you know, Magic 8-Ball mostly says uh, probably not. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace.